Hi there, welcome to this radical tutorial on essential Excel functions. Make sure you do these exercises with me on your own document. If you do it, you'll remember it. So let's start with our 14 beginner tasks. Step one, create a new sheet, name it and color the tab. At the bottom of your workbook, you'll see sheet one here, select it, double click, and you can rename it to anything. Um, I will call it sales calls data. If you want to create a new sheet, just click the plus icon and you can do that many times and have many sheets. If you want to color them, select, right click, tab color and apply. Now, this could be useful if you have many tabs and you quickly want to locate one according to color or you know match them to a particular department color or so on. That's it. Step two, insert data on the sheet, such as dates, text, and numbers. So let's type Monday here, January. Let's type one, let's type something. Okay, and one more thing. Step three, use autofill for numbers, days, months, and other series. So Excel is very smart and can help you calculate and represent data very quickly. Autofill is when you tell Excel by selecting a particular cell and hovering to the bottom right corner, you see this plus sign, click, drag down, and Excel will automatically deduce what series you're trying to create. So let's uh, delete that. Let's try again with January. What would be the logical suite? There we go. And with one, hover to the bottom right corner. Wait, wait for the plus sign to appear. Drag down as far as you want. Hmm. Now this time it copied the one. So if this happens, click on this icon at the bottom right, autofill options, and you see Excel this time chose to copy the cell but you want it to fill a series. Aha, so there we are. Now uh, let's try from this one, a random number. Okay, once again, Excel assumed that you wanted to copy, but in fact, we want it to create a series. Another way to do so, if I delete both of these, is as you're dragging down, press Control, and another small plus sign will appear. Okay, so if I press control and then release the mouse, it knows that I want a series and not to copy the uh, original data. So let's do it again. Drag, press, hold control, release the mouse, and now we have a series. Will it work with Joe? Hmm. Obviously not, because there's no logical uh, series here. Um, so it will work with numbers and any type of word that Excel can automatically deduce. So basically days and months. Okay. Step four, explore the home tab and format the font and alignment of cells. The home tab here looks very similar to Word and PowerPoint. A few differences are in the alignment section where we can align horizontally and vertically. So if I select a cell over here, I can align the text uh, to the left, middle, right. And if the cell is actually much larger, now I can actually go and adjust according to uh, my preferences. Most of the time you may not have to worry about uh, vertical alignment because the cell is not large enough. Another key uh, function that comes in handy is the merge and center option. So this allows you, for example, if we had some data here, some more data there, and this data is for Monday, and this data is also for Monday. So instead of having Monday twice, we can merge them into one. Now, because we have two words here, it's going, we're going to lose one. In this case, it doesn't matter. 
And there, we have one cell covering two columns. You can do this horizontally with multiple cells. You can do this vertically. And you can do it on a much larger area as well. So this comes very handy when you want to really create a table of uh, your own specifications. I'm going to select all these row, these columns, right click, delete them to get rid of them. Now you'll notice that some of these words like September doesn't completely fit. So I can go up here and drag it and drag this one. But a shorter way to do that is to select all of these columns. And I have two options. I can say, I want all of these five columns to be 25. Hmm, but it's not really useful for this column because there's so much empty space. So another way is to select all five, click between two columns, or double click, and it automatically adjusts to the minimal width for everything to fit. It's a bit narrow, so what I like to do instead in between those two options is to select a width that's just wide enough for the widest word and for other narrow columns is to adjust again. Now it might look better if everything is aligned to the center there. That's more visually appealing. Step five, learn to zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. Press Control and scroll up so you can zoom in. Press Control, scroll down to zoom out. Zoom in, zoom out while holding the Control key. This will be very useful when you have large, large data sheets. And this is actually useful as well in Word and PowerPoint. So use it very quick way. Don't bother going all the way there and clicking multiple times. Okay, Control scroll. Step six, use page break preview, then see print preview. So if you want to see if this fits onto one page, go to view, page break preview. This shows me that yes, indeed, all my data will fit onto one page. When I go back to normal, you'll notice that a dotted line appeared here. And if I scroll down, it goes all the way down here. This represents the demarcation of where page one ends and page two, page three, page four begin. So yes, indeed, as long as my data is within this area, it should be on the same page. So let's click page break preview. Yes, everything fits on a single page. So let's go back. So it's useful to keep this in mind so that when you're creating your tables, inserting lots of data, you'll know whether things will fit or not. Now, if things don't fit, of course, you can modify the uh, column width. You can delete unwanted columns to move everything back into a single page. Step eight, find the option to change orientation of the document. Go to Page Layout, Orientation, and click Landscape. Obviously, what this does is it rotates your paper so that you have more space uh, horizontally and a little bit less vertically. Normally, for tables, or data, charts, we look at this type of information horizontally. So it's a good idea to do that. You'll give yourself more space to work with. Step nine, insert a comment in cell D4, then edit, and finally delete it. So you can insert a comment anywhere. It just shows D4. So to do that, select D4, right click, insert comment. So you'll see this red triangle. This indicates the cell contains a comment. And this is the comment authored by Conrad. Or you could uh, change that, Joe said, or it could just simply be suggestion. If you click outside, done. The comment is saved automatically. And just by hovering 
over this cell, the comment appears. Again, right click, insert comment, type. If you need, you can stretch this comment box so that everything will appear. Click outside and it's saved. To delete a comment, right click on the cell, delete comment. Done. Step 10. Use the find and replace function to replace Monday with M-O-N. Of course, we could go in here and manually change this, but what Excel is very powerful at is you can give it a command and it can repeat that command infinite number of times. So let's give it the command that uh, any Monday appearing on this sheet will automatically, automatically be changed to M-O-N. And before we do that, let's copy and paste a bunch of Mondays randomly. Okay, so I don't want to change these Mondays one by one because there's eight of them. So I'm gonna go to Home, Find and Select, and choose Find. Under Find, you have Find and Replace. In this case, we want Replace. So we want Excel to find cells containing Monday. Uh, make sure the spelling and the uppercase, lowercase are exactly as it appears on the sheet, so capital M. We want that to be replaced with capital M-O-N. Once we click Replace All, any Monday on this sheet will be changed to M-O-N. There we go, eight replacements were made. So close this, and automatically these are changed. So we could do that uh, for anything, basically. If we wanted all the Januarys to change to Jan or Joe to change to Joseph, that could be a very quick way to get it done instead of one by one. Step 11, use find and replace function to replace yellow cells with red cells. Actually, let's make this more interesting. Let's change all the MON cells to yellow MON cells. So let's go again, control F for find and replace. Let's go to replace. So we're looking for cells containing MON. We want to replace them with MON, but we actually want to modify the format. So go to options. We're looking for MON with no particular format and we want it to be replaced with MON with a format containing a yellow fill. And let's make the font larger. So you get a preview here of currently, this is what we have, and we wanna change all of those to Monday with yellow fill and larger font size. Let's try it. Hmm. Eight replacements, again, good, because there are eight MONs. Let's close that. And there, you can make a simple change multiple times, but all at once, because Excel uh, remembers the function or the command that you give it. Very smart. Step 12, use basic calculation functions for sum, average, max, min, and count. So this is... Uh, a little bit advanced, but have no fear. I'm gonna undo the previous step. There we go. And I'm going to clear these or just delete to get them out of the way. Okay, so for this, I'm going to quickly build a table and I'm gonna show you how you can do that too. Delete comment, okay. Um, I'm going to create a table of my three colleagues, Joe, Anne and Julie, the number of sales calls they've made every day of the week. There we go. I will adjust the width them a little wider. This one a little wider. Okay. Anytime you want to create a table, I recommend putting borders so that it's very easy to see which uh, column is which. So choose all borders. And then, so this is what we get here. 
select again, and let's put an outside border, a thicker one. There, that looks better. To preview what this would look like on a blank page, let's go to View and uncheck Grid Lines. There, so blank paper, this table looks good. We'll keep Grid Lines on because it helps to find cells uh, more quickly. Let's go back to Normal. Yeah, here we are. Let's put random numbers. Okay. So Excel is very powerful in the sense that it can calculate things for you instantly and an infinite number of times. You'll notice this bar. This is called the formula bar, um, and this represents the function or the calculations that you want Excel to do for you. We want to calculate the sum of all these. We also want to calculate the average. Let's figure out what are the minimum values, the maximum values. And then we'll see what the count, the number of items are in here. Now, you may not know what these represent yet, but in a moment you will. This is very powerful. Sum just means total. So I'll type this here. We want the sum to be shown in this cell. So click here, then go to formulas. These are the most common ones, sum, average, count, max, min. Click on sum. And Excel will automatically assume that you're looking for the sum of the cells above the one you've selected. And if that's the case, press Enter. And there you have it. It's automatically calculated the sum of these cells. Let's do this again. Select this one. Auto sum. Do we want D3, D4, D5 like this? Yes. Press Enter. OK. Now let's be smart about it. Instead of doing it five times, Excel can autofill for us. So select this one, for example, move to the bottom right corner, click, drag, and yes, that appears to be correct. The sum is 102. To double check that the formula is correct, click the cell and go up here in the formula bar, sum G3 to G5. G3 to G5. That's correct. So yes, perfect. So that's how you do it. To figure out the average, click here, go up and select average. Now be careful. Excel will automatically select all the values above the cell that you've selected, but we don't want to include 29, which is the sum. So just click and drag to identify which three cells or more. Press Enter, and that looks about right. Another way to do that would be to select the cell first, and then go in and type the equation, which must always begin with equal. And then let's type average. The next step is to include a parenthesis. And as you can see, place number one, two, three, and so on. If it's multiple numbers, you could say this one, comma, that one, comma, this one, comma, that one. And you could basically choose any of them. And when you close the parentheses and press enter, that's it, you're done. But we want uh, three consecutive ones. So D3, colon, D5. Colon means two. If we close the parentheses and press enter, we're done. Eight is the average of these three. So remember, don't do this five times. Use autofill. And there, we're done. Min calculates the minimal, the lowest number from a particular range. And actually, if you want, you can merge all these. Merge into one. And what we're going to do is we're going to look for the uh, smallest value in the entire table. And we're going to do this for the max value as well. So click here. We're looking for min. So formulas, min. And instead of these, we want from 23 all the way to 2. Press Enter. The lowest value is indeed 2. Let's try it differently here. So select 
this cell equals max parenthesis. Click this one. And actually, let's just click and drag. Close the parenthesis. Enter. 87 is correct. Yes. Um, finally, count is the number of values. So again, this makes sense if we merge because we don't need to count the number of numbers, the number of values from each day because we know it's always three. So if we delete one, let's delete this two and see what happens. Okay, so you'll notice that the average has slightly changed. It used to be 34 and now it's 50. This minimum has not changed because there's another two. Let's change this to one. Aha. So these um, results will automatically change if you make modifications to the table. So once you've told Excel a particular function, you say calculate this based on the data presented above, it will make automatic adjustments if you change the table. So that's why it's very useful to um, use the functions because if you do it manually in your brain or on paper and you change the table, you may forget to change these results. So count. Let's go to formulas. Count numbers from here to here. Let's press enter. 14 is correct because I've deleted one. If I delete another one, the count is 13. If I delete all of these, the count is 10 now and the sum is zero and the average is invalid. So this means invalid. So in fact, um, we would just delete that because the average does not apply. So there you go, five basic calculation functions which are very often used and will save you a lot of calculation time. Step 13, gather data in a table and create two types of charts from it. Okay. So I don't need this information anymore. I'll delete these rows. Um, I will fill some numbers again. So to create a chart from data you have in a table, select the entire table, including the uh, what will end up being axes. Go to Insert. And you have a variety of options here, but the most commonly used are bar charts, line charts, and pie charts. In this case, let's choose a bar chart because there you go. It's uh, very clear visually, um, and it's a simple, simple way of presenting the information. Now let's select this again, and let's create, let's insert a line chart with markers so we can see the points where the data is. There, two charts. Step 14, modify the chart's colors, fonts, titles, axis, and data labels. To do this, simply, well, first let's resize a little bit so that it can fit side by side. You can easily move them around as well. First things first, make sure the chart title is there. You always want to identify any visuals or graphs. So these are sales sales calls made. Copy, paste. Okay, the next thing we want to do is modify the color. Blue, we don't have blue in the company logo or branding, so I'm going to change that to red. Um, gray also is doesn't look very good. I'm going to change that to a nice green. Okay, so there. I've changed the colors. I could easily do that on this chart as well. The next thing I want to do is there seems to be a missing, we know these are days, but what are these numbers? Oh yeah, sales calls, but let's make sure everything appears where it should be. So click on the chart, plus we want to add axis titles. Um, not both, just the vertical axis. You see here it appeared. So these are Number of sales calls. Of course, you can select, change the font type, font size. You could modify the color as well, put it bold, make small changes like that. Um, 
I'm going to select this copy and I'm going to go over here and do the same thing. Plus, axis titles, vertical, and I'm going to paste. Whoops, that's quite large. So I'm going to okay, select, select all of it. And I believe I had 11. Um, essentially, this is all we need to change. You could select the legend and move it around if you wish. But you know, those are just minor changes and they're aesthetic. So there you are. 14 beginner tasks. Remember to practice, and the more you do it, the more confident you'll feel that you can use Excel effectively. And um, remember, Excel is one of the most commonly used applications in the workplace. You're going to work in an office, you will use Excel. Good luck.